uh, co-founder of Granite Towers Equity Groups. We're a multifamily syndication firm. We buy apartments in Dallas, Fort Worth, and Nashville. Uh, typically, we're targeting 150 to 350 units. Uh, do a lot of B and C class properties where we're sticking in about 10 to $20,000 for rehab, and then we hold them for about five years. Uh, a little bit more about myself, started investing in 2008 in the single family space and then fell into multifamily because my business partner was a professional snowboarder and he had been advised by his CPA to start buying apartments to offset his tax bill. A uh, photo of him on the bottom left hand corner um, was, you know, I would say one of the top 20 guys in the snowboard industry. That's how we met each other. Where do we do business? We still do a little bit of business up in Minnesota, but mostly Nashville and DFW. A lot of population growth, a lot of job growth, landlord friendly, no state income tax. Um, first off, uh, we have one problem child. So we have 17 different apartment communities, about 3,200 units under management. And we have one asset in East Texas, uh, Tyler, Texas, that has just been a bear. Um, we've been racking our heads against the walls, trying to figure out how we can get this deal stabilized. Um, occupancy is, is hovering right around 70%. Trend is about 80%. Delinquency, um, anywhere from 10 to 20% per month, um, which has just been killing us. Um, so we're you know, in the red 25 to 50K a month. Um, literally all of our other deals are doing well, and this is the one problem child. Uh, we've tried to ramp up Section 8. Um, you know, we have about 15 tenants. It's 264 unit property, so about 15 tenants that are Section 8 just having trouble um, attracting more people from that group. Um, so I would love to figure out how to tap Dan Breezy, my business partner's sphere. So he has a pretty good following from when he was a professional snowboarder. I think he has about 70 to 100,000 people that are following him on social media platforms. And right now we're doing nothing with that. So trying to figure out how we can tap that, maybe tap professional athletes as well. What do you think is the issue? I think, I think we have two issues, um, partially the team, yeah. um, proper leadership, proper organization out there. Mm -hmm. And then the second issue is just finding qualified tenants that are actually going to pay their bill. That's the bigger issue. How many units is it? 264. 260 in a, in a 150 MSA, is a, that's a lot. Right. Um, yeah. Have you looked at LIHTC? Uh We have, what I've heard is, is that it's, it's, you can't convert, you have to do that on the front end with development, is that, mm -mm. no? No, okay. so you could, you could do a LIHTC, I'm doing one right now on okay. a project we already own, and um, essentially we've got like three and a half million in it, the, the state will buy it from us for six million, Okay. then give us a million dollar developer fee at settlement, then we have to convert all the units, basically re-renovate them, mm -hmm. then we keep we have 1% ownership of the asset, but we keep all the cash flow, all the equity, and all the equity when it sells. Got it. So, um, and this was a problem child. This one that we're converting to Litech yep. was a problem child. Do you and have to do a refinance for that at all? Or Yeah, you, you will. Okay. You will, but yep. it's, it's through the state and it's through the Fed. You know, it's through the uh, HUD and it's through okay. uh, the state. So typically it'll be a Fannie Freddie product, which you guys will have no problem yep. getting. Yep. And then they'll, they, they will subsidize it with the state and some federal funds. Okay, got it. I can help you more on this. Yeah. You go non-competitive because um, you won't win a competitive bid on your, your first one. You can go non-competitive mm -hmm. and it's almost guaranteed that you'll get it. Okay. I mean, it's a bitch. Yeah. to go through, but Worth it in, the unless the other thing is to sell it at loss. Yeah, and we do have it listed right now just to test the market and, you know. How, how much of a loss would you have to take? Uh, I mean, think? we'd be able to get more than the loan value back, but yeah. investors, you know, probably a 50 to 60% loss, which is hard Fun. to swallow, really yeah. hard to swallow. Can you kind not restructure the debt? Um, just no, not I mean, to, we have, to we make have a fixed work. rate loan on it, you yeah. know, 3.7% interest rate. So our debt's great. Jesus. It's just, yeah, uh, so, yeah it's just issues on the property How level. Yeah. Is there, um, is there a university near there? Uh, there is, yep. yep. Um, so so, a couple miles so we had another problem child a couple years ago. Yeah. And we, we, uh, we knew the university was getting ready to build, they had to build student housing. They were running out of housing. And we mm -hmm. approached them and did a master lease. They okay. took 50 units from us for five years. Okay, yeah, that's a great idea. 
you know, just, I mean, again, that wasn't easy, but it mm-hmm. was like, hey, if the university's on the mass release, that's guaranteed money. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm not fucking with tenants and all this kind of shit. And then yeah. the other thing that I baked in, is I don't have to turn the units. So when the students come in and out, it's on the university, so we don't have that cost at all. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah, now we had to give them a break on rent, yeah. but it's, you know, when I, when I run it through the pro forma, it actually comes out better because I basically have no maintenance cost on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those unit turns kill you. Yeah. For sure. So I would check Litech. I would see okay. if there's an opportunity with any of the student housing. I mean, he's not wrong on taking the loss, but mm-hmm. being in the fun world like you, yeah. I mean, that, that, I don't know that I would go that route because yeah. that's going to fuck your investors. Yeah, we're trying to do everything we can to yeah. eliminate that. So yeah. They're just. I have to do the analytics of his audience. Like mm-hmm. for me, like I was just talking to him about something. I know my audience. Mm-hmm. Like I know who they are when it, you know, I study them. So because I study them, I understand like how to talk to them. Yeah. Right? So you, I, mean, you, I can tell you there's a jackpot at looking at the audience, but he, he would have to know who his audience is, right? Got it. From a perspective of uh, like income. So I know mm-hmm. I have a financial page, mm-hmm. right? So because I, even with Brandon, Brandon has a financial page. So all of his, all of his content is catered around you want to make some money. Mm-hmm. Freaking name is Mailbox Money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. they understand what they're on his page for. So it's not that you can't leverage his audience, mm-hmm. but he would have to understand, y'all would have to collectively understand who the audience is and how we go to him. There's money there, but now you got to start figuring out like what the leads are. Because you have an audience, but if they ain't what they're there for, yeah. then it's wasted. You know what I'm saying? The better yep. play would be y'all collaborating Mm-hmm. publicly so he can introduce his audience to what he's doing mm-hmm. that right? makes sense yeah and bridge you in because mm-hmm. what that now does is his audience is coming from him but if he just mm-hmm. talk to his audience about investing they're gonna be like nah bro I ain't coming for that shit mm-hmm. yeah you know what I'm saying like, yeah, I'm here for, for sure. snowboarding for sure right but if he takes his audience on yo here's what I'm doing mm-hmm. and this is what I'm doing it with mm-hmm. this is the results we're gonna get in now you can tap the audience in. So you can't just go, hey, y'all just made some money. Be like, nah, bro, it's snowboard, y'all. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it makes sense. That's how you would do it. Like, I would, yep. like, you and him come up with a strategy on how publicly you all are together because he's taking his snowboarding money and he wants to, you know, make money outside of snowboarding. Mm-hmm. Right? Now for you sure. have to make the audience. Yep. Because if his audience is there for snowboarding, <laughs> probably has more professional athletes in there mm-hmm. and now that's the messaging that allows them to bridge the gap with you does that make sense that makes sense that's all yeah I got. for sure